you know, this knowledge was universal. Uh, and, and really what got me thinking about this is that our secret streams that I do for Patreons or patrons um, on Patreon, uh, we were going through degree 28 of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry and line by line picking it apart and analyzing you know what it's saying and and what the import of it all is and uh, he was I mean the amount of research that went into this uh, is truly uh, astounding uh, but you know he's going through every single ancient culture on earth I mean, it gets a bit tedious, but it's it's sort of a worthy endeavor because you eventually realize that he has made a case that, as he says in the beginning of the book, that uh, man had the truth but lost the truth and found error. And that, that error is all of the religions that supplanted the original knowledge um, that caused us to lose our ability to have dialogue directly with the light. Um, you know, even looking at the book of Genesis, it starts out with this idea that uh, the first emanation of God, basically, was a word. Well, a word is vibrating air, but if you have any background in Jewish mysticism, uh, you know that it's a little bit closer to... Um, a little bit more true to the tale, I guess, uh, that they're really saying that nothing became conscious and that that consciousness was what created the disruption that destroyed the unity of that initial nothingness. And the way, the form that it took was an electromagnetic wave. The vibration uh, the logos, the word that was from God that rushed forth, right? This is just taking these sort of lofty, sophisticated metaphysical concepts and turning them into a digestible language that people can understand, you know? And so the, the, the real metaphysical teaching that lies behind the idea of a logos and a word is that this wave uh, and its vibration, its oscillation and the symmetry, right? that is imposed on the chaotic energy that it encounters is what gives rise to order. And so the second emanation of that wave was light. And so, you know, for my own metaphysical work where I'm kind of at right now is this sort of chicken and the egg um, uh, uh, paradox, uh, what came first, light or consciousness? Um, and, you know, I, I don't really, you get to a certain point where you don't really care about the details that much, you know what I mean? We, what we need to understand is something substantive about the universe, where we came from, uh, is essential knowledge to have a sort of sense of purpose regarding where we're going and why we're going there. And I, you know, I, I think it, it, it isn't really even that extraordinary. Uh, once you boil away all of the dross and separate the wheat from the chaff, you know, as I said in the beginning of the stream, this is all really, really obvious. Uh, once you think about it, you know, um, light, uh, is without light there is no life there's nothing so certainly there is no thought um, it, it may seem like a sort of uh, oversimplification to say that it's obvious that our consciousness comes from the light um, but I think if you if you look at everything we know about consciousness and even the biology of the brain and how um, you know electricity the function of electricity in our neurobiological landscape um, you know, it, it just, it comes back to flashes of light and that electromagnetic wave again. Um, and so, you know, the old, uh, middle age, m middle ages, dark ages, I don't know, you know, back in the day, the Europeans drew, um, a sun with a face on it a lot, you know, and, and the reality is that that was not 
Um, that was not like, uh, you know, they weren't being cute. Uh, that was, that was a, a, a secret communication basically between initiates. Um, and you know, of course it almost, it almost doesn't bear elucidation because we all know, and I don't want to be redundant, but you know, Ra, Osiris, Jesus, uh, you know, there were Norse sun gods. I, I think under this shirt, I have an Incan sun god. Um, you know, the, uh, the practice of the uh, Lakota Sioux of putting hooks through their chest and dancing around a, a pole in the sun for days, you know? I mean, there's so many variations on this theme. Um, and the reason is that it is indeed our own consciousness that comes to us on the rays of light. Uh, it is written in um, the same uh, Masonic book that I uh, took the um, description of this uh, video from um, that uh, well we, we talked about the man had truth and found error um, Totally lost my train of thought on that one. Oh, that's what it is. Uh, that some initiates have never stepped foot into a lodge, which is um, the idea that you can literally receive initiation on the rays of the sun. Um, you know, the higher self. Uh, uh, that Aleister Crowley uh, uh, was able to make contact with allegedly in his work he referred to as a solar angel and I, I think the reason is that there really is no other such uh, uh, creature um, it, all uh, disincarnate consciousness is just light uh, there are really only two things in the universe there is the vacuum and then there is light there's the active and the passive uh, you know, this is one of the reasons that I don't actually believe in negative entities and demons. Um, there's no active evil. It's not, that's not what the darkness is. That's not what the antinomy to active is. Um, there's only the active and the passive. Um, and so, uh, also, aside from, um, you know, Victorian or Middle Age or whenever it was that they were drawing the faces on the, you know, the alchemical uh, tradition, um, the painters putting the, the face on the sun. Um, I, a Modest Mouse has a song where he sings that the stars are projectors. Uh, and the way that I kind of have thought about it is that it's as if the... Um, one soul that is the soul, the sun, S O L, again, hidden in plain sight. Um, the soul, S O L, is, you know, your soul is the same, but with you in it, S O U L. Uh, and I honestly think that those kind of things happen because the subconscious is uh, communicating, and also because the fundamental structure of the universe is holographic, and so the all is in the all. And so when you're looking at the scraps and pieces and bits, um, you'll occasionally see uh, expressions of that fundamental structure um, and sort of, uh, you know, the, the, as the dilated people said, the, the writings on the wall, uh, signs, symbols, hints, clues, the writings on the wall, but the rest is up to you. Um, so we are uh, the soul of the sun. Um, reflecting its, uh, its, its, the contents of its being, its creative expression, um, you know, it, 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 its, its experience of its own creation. Because, you know, this Gnostic idea of a demiorgos as like a lesser god, you know, I think you could also think of that as the individual stars that are projecting um, their basic essence, the, the filtration of that fundamental central sun that people call creator or God or, um, you know, the, the, however you want to think about it. But there is that, that central sun that is the absolute nothingness at the center of, of creation. Um, and then there are, just as we have individual fingerprints and we live our own lives in accordance with the dictates of our own being, our own souls, our own spirits, 
um, each individual star is a being um, that has the same sort of function relative to uh, the um, the one, you know, the the most high God or however you want to call it. Uh, it's really um, a, the, this sort of structural, um, you know, reflection, repetition or re repetition of reflection uh, or uh, replication by reflection, microcosm, macrocosm. Uh, everything in the universe is doing what the one thing is doing. Um, it's all spelled out uh, uh, very, very um, plainly. And so uh, one of the reasons that I wanted to do this stream tonight, aside from the fact that doing the secret streams just kind of was making me think about it a lot. Um, I, I've had some experiences in, in regards to, to all of this that I guess gave me um, a, some some very more specific details or uh, gave me confidence that the dialogue that we are capable of creating with the universe with the light that's really what it is it's dialogue with the light um, it's an actual thing you know I'm a very skeptical person I think that you know people need to what's going on <laughs> Philip Hale Satan um, we are um, um, speaking of having dialogue with flames, right? Um, so, okay, so when I was uh, going through my uh, the Phoenix process, I, I call it, um, where I really had sort of pierced the veil to the uh, extent that it was like being plucked off of a couch and thrown into an Atlantic gale. Um, all of a sudden, uh, just really, really, really rapid and sudden and um, overwhelming. Uh, and so, you know, it just constant synchronicities of an order uh, of magnitude and um, of, of improbability uh, that they were, you know, they were freaking out people around me too, which in a way was useful because I knew that I wasn't imagining these things. Um, but you know, it was just absolutely crazy. And at, at one point during this process, I started to go out every night and, um, I would put on this, this, uh, this smoking jacket that I, I had gotten a gift card to Macy's. So I got all these weird, expensive things. Um, and that was one of them. And I would put on that, that smoking jacket and at exactly midnight, which is interesting because I didn't notice that I was, I didn't, I wasn't doing it intentionally. I, I was just compelled um, by intuition to go and do this. And so every night for seven days, I went out and faced a different fear. And each night the, the experience got more and more um, in, in, in uh, I, I don't want to say supernatural, but something along those lines, just improbably impossible and um, very, very powerful. And at the end of this um, period, uh, I, I had been sort of guided by an internal voice and I, you know, I, my presence of mind was, was totally still there. So, uh, I, I had a sort of safety guidelines set up that, you know, I would not, I would, I would play along with this voice, uh, so long as I didn't, um, you know, it didn't tell me to do anything harmful or stupid or whatever, you know? So I thought as long as basically, as long as it's, it's, it's harmless or helpful, and um, it had already established uh, that it was capable of, of knowing things, or at least it seemed like it was capable of knowing things that um, compelled me to take it seriously, right? So uh, on this particular day, um, I, you know, I had decoded an awful lot of stuff and um, it was the end of that seven day period and um, it, was, it was getting to be dusk. So I was running out of sunlight, and as it would turn out, the sun was extremely important to what was about to happen. And so I, the, the voice told me that I needed to go out into this field and sit on a big rock uh, that was in the middle of the field and do a sun ritual. And I, I thought, I don't know any sun rituals. I don't do that kind of thing. I'm going to feel very silly, and I'm not um, interested. I'm not playing along. Um, this is just too stupid. I'm not doing it. And so, um, 
by that time though I had already walked down my driveway and I had started heading to the field and so when I pivoted to turn around and go home my phone beeped and um, I, I I didn't have a smartphone it was a flip phone um, because I just didn't even know what a smartphone was probably I, it was like 2011 I don't know if other people had them yet or not but um, anyways uh, the phone beep and I flipped it open and um, it was I I don't I didn't look to see who it was but it said you and your brothers will echo this gospel to the four corners of the globe and yet the sun shines on and at that moment I realized that uh, you know if whatever this voice was could send me messages on my 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 cell phone I had better at least humor it um, Later, by the way, I did check and see whose phone number it was, and it was the singer from my band at the time, um, who was from the swamps of East Texas and doesn't talk like that. And when I asked him why he sent me that message, he looked at me blankly and said, I have no idea. I didn't even think about it. I just typed it. So that's fucking weird too, right? So, um, so I go out to the rock and I sit down on the rock and I'm like okay what do I do now and the voice says raise the energy so I I is I'm thinking I don't I don't know how to raise energy I, I don't you know what does that even mean and so just to just focus on raising the energy and I said okay so I set Indian style and closed my eyes and took some deep breaths and thought okay just feel Feel the energy and raise the energy and I started to tingle and all of the rattlesnakes in that entire field all started rattling immediately like <laughs> and that was when I realized that something was seriously happening um, and so and it was an extraordinary setting for this too it was uh, right across from an old Anasazi cave um, that had like spiral rock art and there were waterfalls all around. It was like a beautiful um, sort of canyon, a small canyon in uh, in southwestern uh, Colorado in Durango. And um, so the rattlesnakes are all going crazy. And I'm like, okay. And at this point, I'm kind of in an excited state because I'm like, holy shit balls, you know, whatever this is, is real. And um, so... I, I said, well, what now? And I had, the same voice had explained to me that there's a veil between worlds. Um, and, you know, just as everything is reflective, you know, your reflection is reversed in a mirror, right? So, no voice. What do you mean, no voice? Does anyone else not hear my voice? Because I'm looking at... Um, my audio and I see that it's working so um, if anyone can confirm or deny uh, that my voice has stopped coming I don't see how that's possible though I can see all of my readouts in so um, okay yeah I thought so uh, so um, where was I in the story okay so it had explained to me that there was a veil a veil uh, and in the way that things are reversed in a reflection, that things are reversed when they pass into this world. And uh, the voice said, remember what I told you the other day about how things get reversed uh, when they come to this, this plane? And I said, yes. And it said, okay, well, what is your name backwards? My birth name is Harley, um, which if you interpret uh, the first um, uh, syllable in Egyptian and the suffix li in Gaelic, and uh, my last name is Donley, which um, without it just means king like so like the sun king um, I noticed as I was, you know this is like wow what the hell is this so um, so it says you know what is your name backwards and I'm like yell Ra yell Ra the Egyptian sun god Ra yell Ra so I start screaming Ra at the top of my um, lungs and staring into uh, the sun and at that moment, I start seeing these purple tendrils, um, like spitting out of the sun, flashing all around. And uh, last time I was telling a story to one of our guests here at our retreat, actually, uh, he s explained why that happens during solar storms. Um, and so, uh, you know, it was just a really, really powerful and insane experience. And 
you know, I think it's worthy of noting that I don't know that I would have like planned all that subconsciously and had that, that yell raw, like reversing my name. And you know, I just, I don't, I can't imagine that I would have like subconsciously cooked all that up in that moment. It's just, um, it's just a bit much, uh, you know, I mean, I don't know, but then it, this is the crazy part. This is the really, really crazy part. Um, as if there wasn't already a crazy part. The next day, I drove down to the gas station, and um, I uh, I looked at the newspaper, and I believe you guys can look this up. I have looked it up since. Um, it's still there. <laughs> uh, I think it was August 26, 2011. Um, somewhere right around that date, maybe the 28th. I don't really recall exactly, but you know, look up August 2011 if you want to see this for yourself. Um, and they, it said the biggest solar storm in an estimated 26,000 years uh, occurred while I was yelling raw at the sun. And, um, you know, of course, I'm not suggesting that I caused that solar storm. That's not the point of this at all. Um, and it's not. What it indicates to me is that whatever guided me out there to that rock and walked me through this uh, sort of ritual did know that that solar storm was going to occur. Um, and so, you know, that was sort of a pivotal moment, I guess, in, in my development in terms of having to confront um, the idea, the reality, that the our, our consciousness, our soul, S-O-L with you in it, right? Um, it, 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 it comes to us on rays of light and that the sun is indeed conscious. In fact, I think that the density of, of the light, uh, it, it is probably super conscious. Um, really quite a, a, an amazing um, experience. And so, uh, you know, and it also taught me something about taking my intuition seriously. Unfortunately, I didn't take that lesson quite as deeply as I could have. I, I have been able to have a lot of extraordinary, uh, borderline impossible experiences um, since I've, I've really started to accept uh, the reality of having that kind of dialogue uh, with, um, with the universe. Um, and particularly directly with the light. Um, and then I guess, you know, another, another story that I can tell you guys that relates to the um, psychedelic experience, I guess, or something that happened um, under the influence of San Pedro, uh, which is a medicine that is um, specifically about connecting with light and information and it's it's very solar and cerebral and masculine it's sort of the yang to ayahuasca's yin i guess um and also by the way you guys do me a favor hit the like button share subscribe support us on patreon or one of the options in the um description or i think i might have copied and pasted it into the chat we're demonetized, so we get no support um, from YouTube. So if you like this content, please support us. And also, we only have a couple spaces left for October, and that's our last month doing this retreat. So if you're interested in coming out to learn uh, hermetic ritual magic and experience plant medicine um, and see the jungle, uh, you need to send me an email, muy pronto. Um, and if you have a group of like four, uh, it'll be a really, really good deal for you. So, um, you know, if you're coming, especially for a few weeks. Um, we have one large room that you can share that will, uh, you know, I can hook you up. Uh, so speaking of plant medicine, um, speaking of plant medicine, uh, this particular, uh, San Pedro experience, um, I took quite a large dose uh, I didn't really realize how large of a dose, um, and I actually blacked out for a little while, um, and I, I think I kind of came in and out of, of consciousness, and 
uh, I don't remember wandering into this abandoned house. Um, <laughs> it was on my friend's property. He, he started building it and ran out of money. So it wasn't like a random, you know, abandoned house. Um, it was on the property where I was hanging out anyways. But um, I didn't know where I was or how I got in there. And I suddenly had awareness and um, all sorts of crazy paranoid thoughts were going through my head that, you know, it was some kind of prison, even though there was no glass in the windows and I could have just climbed out. Um, so I was, you know, way, way out there. And uh, the cactus starts speaking to me. And uh, suddenly I am in this sea of what I understood immediately to be photons. And there were trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions. I mean, I don't know how you can possibly even perceive uh, that much stuff. Uh, it was really, really fucking crazy. And so um, I noticed that these photons were also tesseracts, which means that... Um, you can't ever see the whole shape at once um, because they have one of their dimensions is time, right? So it's not that they're not completely there, but they're moving through time and that movement is connected to space. So you can only perceive part of them uh, from any given relative point in time, if that makes sense. And so they were sort of moving and I could see that they had some extraordinary geometry. Um, and then I thought, I wonder if I can zoom in. So when I tried to zoom in, instead of my vision going to the object, the object floated up um, closer to me uh, and I could move it around and kind of look at it from um, different angles. And, um, and then the cactus was back narrating and it said, um, you know, this, uh, you are one of these points of light. And I, you know, unfortunately, I don't know that I can recall the entire dialogue, but then um, it, it removed, uh, it said, watch this. And it removed one of these like trillions and trillions and trillions of points of light, which I understood to be um, a few things simultaneously. They were uh, souls, they were photons and they were uh, the fundamental structural components of the universe. Um, so they had a function in terms of being like part of the fabric of reality. And when it took one of them away, I ceased to exist. And it's not like, it's not like everything turned black or was clear or anything like that. I just didn't exist anymore. And it was absolutely terrifying. It was one of the scariest, I mean, when I returned, I guess, you know, because there was nothing when I was nothing. Um, it was absolute nothingness. And then when I returned, I was a little bit confused. And so I asked, so what are you telling me? That this is all just a bunch of random gobbledygook? And, and as I was asking the question, I realized that that was the opposite of what was being communicated. It was saying, no, I'm trying to show you that every single component, every constituent element, every grain of sand in the universe is exactly where it must be. And uh, that each uh, constituent um, uh, of this chain of existence, um, if even one tiny subatomic particle um, was removed the entire thing would not exist it was showing me the uh sublime intricacy uh you know all of these words completely fall short um that's kind of why i'm struggling to choose any you know they're all so inadequate um but we can call it intricacy of the fundamental structure of the thing and that you know it and, and the level of consciousness um you know, the, of the universal mind, uh, I prefer to call it rather than creator or God or any of this stuff, because, um, again, chicken or the egg consciousness, we don't really know if, uh, the light, uh, generated consciousness, um, as it became more complex and sophisticated. And so, you know, this sort of old, uh, old world idea of uh, a, an omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent being that has always existed uh, and always will exist and has always been all-knowing. I'm not so sure about that. 
I think that consciousness could have evolved. Um, you know, I think it would have happened uh, very, you know, when there was still a very, very fundamental field of just basic particles. Um, and that what we think of consciousness is really just the organizing principle. And it is a product of the electromagnetic wave. Um, but we're getting a little bit off base because I want to talk about the fact that I'm not the only person that this cactus has communicated exactly this information to. Um, so a few months later, I guess, uh, I met a kid that was um, from somewhere that had been constantly ravaged by war forever and ever and ever. Uh, it's not Syria, maybe, or, you know, somewhere like that. And so he had very severe trust issues. And uh, he and his girlfriend wanted to um, flat earth and genius uh, go together like military and intelligence. Two words combined that cannot make sense. Um, I realize it says subgenius. Um, I just I hope that this name is a joke because man, holy shit balls! Did that there has never been a dumber idea than flat Earth. Um, while we're on the subject of divine light and consciousness, uh, there is absolutely no possibility that's true. True, and you can observe this for yourself with your naked eyes like a hundred different ways. Um, I'm a little bit biased too because uh, flat earthers threaten to kill me and my entire family because I won a debate against one of them and just making him look stupid. I mean, the guy actually said that the sun is electric. You can tell by looking at it. Um, so sorry, I didn't mean to go off on that rant there, but every time I see any reference to flat earth, I'm just like, man, God save us from your people. <laughs> um, where was I at? Okay, so I'm not the only person that's had this experience with a cactus. There was a Syrian kid, and he had trust issues, so he wanted to drink it alone. And I was not stoked about this idea at all. Um, but I figured that, you know, I was only going to be next door because he was right at the neighbor's house. And I said, okay, well, you know, don't drink any more than an ounce. And if you get into trouble, send me a text. And uh, so, like, six hours go by, eight hours go by. I don't hear anything, so I go over there to check on him. Um, and it turns out that he and his girlfriend had ended up stark raving naked and in the bushes and the neighbor, uh, you know, had to like, they, they took forever to, to pull them together. Um, so I guess I should have checked on them a little bit earlier, but, um, you know, I, I just thought he was, it just wasn't that much. And I thought he could send me a text. Um, last time I've ever done that, by the way, no more leaving people alone with the, <laughs> the medicine. So anyways, no one was hurt or anything. They were fine by the time I got there. Um, but by chance, a San Pedro shaman had happened to be uh, just on the property. He wasn't living there. He wasn't, I don't know what the hell he was doing there, but he just happened to be around. And um, when I arrived, the kid looked at me and he's just like, the billions and trillions and billions, they're tiny and, and light and there's billions and trillions. And I'm like, I know exactly what this kid is looking at right now because I've seen it myself and you know through his babbling I could ascertain that the cactus had told him exactly what it had told me um, by the way when I say the cactus I don't actually mean that the spirit of the cactus is talking to you I don't necessarily not mean that either but I'm much more inclined uh, to suspect that what these compounds actually do is bring down fields uh, that filter out our um, sensory overload, uh, you know, there's way too much information coming in from the universe and we need to filter it down to something manageable so that we can function. And uh, what psychedelics do is uh, take down um, parts of the filter. Uh, I think different psychedelics take down different, I guess, frequency manifolds or something, you know, because they're not all exactly the same. There's overlap. Um, but they're definitely dealing with, with different stuff, right? Like ayahuasca is like nighttime emotion, uh, trauma and the body and all of this sort of stuff. Uh, and San Pedro is like light and masculine and daytime and information and you know what I mean? So, um, but then there are definite similarities. So at any rate, uh, 
So I'm listening to this, and I said something about how, like, yeah, he's having the whole photon experience. And the shaman goes, well, the cactus really just puts you in uh, communication with the light, doesn't it? It's just light. We're just light. It's all just light talking to itself. And so, you know, that was kind of a powerful moment because I realized that my perception that light was having a conversation with itself, that that's what consciousness was. That's what our experience is. That's what our existence is. That's all it is. Um, that this, this like, you know, Colombian, uh, San Pedro shaman, um, indigenous guy who came from a culture that has nothing to do with mine and, you know, his experiences, you know what I mean? There's like so little that we had in common, like culturally and our influences and, you know, all of that. Uh, we probably weren't reading the same authors and you know what I mean? But, um, we have exactly the same understanding of what is happening and uh, it, to me, those kind of experiences are like, if you go to Egypt, light is God basically, but that's not how, that's not exactly how I think we should think about it. I, I think we need to stop looking for God. It's, it's not about being God. It's about just the simple fact that light and consciousness are inextricably intertwined and the light is the source of our consciousness. I don't think we're ever going to find a being um, that is God. I, I just don't think that it works that way. Um, I, I, I think that uh, the light and the electromagnetic wave are, you know, the, the constituent components of our consciousness. And that's really all we need to know. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to share that San Pedro story because I feel like, um, I feel like, you know, that and, and the, the experience of being called by some voice in my subconscious, um, to go out and yell raw at the sun like that, uh, and the way that it, you know, what is your name backwards? It seemed to have a plan that I can't imagine myself, um, generating, um, uh, it's just, and then the solar storm, you know, I mean, there's just no way that all of that is coincidence. There's no fucking way. Sorry. It just isn't. Um, there just isn't. There was so much more to this that I had planned in my head and it, it's really, um, um, it's, I think I'm going to start actually having notes that I'm going to work off of for these. I'm also a little bit distracted by the fact that our, our camera got wet a few uh, weeks ago and every time I've done a long live stream with it the screen starts working again and it just popped back on and so I've just been kind of looking at it like oh my gosh I can actually make take pictures and you know being in the Amazon rainforest with no camera is not cool because there's crazy shit everywhere here it's just a constant constantly getting your mind blown by Oh, okay. So here's another here's another great example of the relationship um, between light and our existence, and um, uh, the way this you know language fails me sometimes when I'm trying to talk about this stuff. But if you think of like the Earth as having a crystalline structure, and then think about how um, why light refracts in a crystal, right? And then think about the ring of biodiversity uh, right around the equator, all the way around the Earth. It is because the light is at its most dense that it refracts into all of this variation in the same way that it would create a rainbow in a crystal, um, you know? Uh, I, I, I am fairly well convinced that that is why we have this band of color and variety uh, wrapped around the earth right at the equator. Um, let's see what else, you know, and then it's, I also think that our, our subconscious, uh, as Terrence McKenna said, um, if the truth can be told so as to be understood, it will be believed. Um, yeah, white light contains the entire spectrum. That's also a very good point. 
Uh, if a truth can be told so as to be believed, it will be understood because everyone knows it deep down inside. Like, that's what he was getting at with that. Um, and so, if you look at art and you look at the things that people say intuitively, uh, if people even betray themselves, right? Like, people that are totally abject, materialist, non-player character, whatever they... They walk into a room and they say, you know, the vibes um, in here. Oh, my screen just went back off. It just flashed back off. I thought it was fixed again, but it only came halfway back on. Damn it. And then went off. Uh, and I'll say, you know, the vibes are whatever in here. The vibes are great. There's some weird vibes, you know. Maybe nobody's even talking. Nothing really happening. They just walk in the room and all of a sudden there's weird vibes, right? Um... It's that sort of thing. These things that everyone knows are real, even though we don't really have any way to measure them. We don't have any way to exactly prove them. Um, nice, Kinsho. Um, but we all know them on some fundamental level. Um, and I think that this, this idea that the stars are projectors is one of those things. You know, the, what, what is that Grateful Dead song? Janis Joplin died and they wrote, you know, Sleep in the Stars. Uh, Eliphas Levi, who uh, Aleister Crowley claimed to be an earlier incarnation of himself, um, said that on the planets we forget and then the stars we remember. Um, it, you know, there's a lot of a lot of references to that. I, I had a client here um, that uh, had lost his mom at a young age and um, in his efforts to reconnect with her, uh, he decided that she was in the stars and it took a really long time to get here from the star that she dwelled in now. Um, I, I had the, actually someone else that was here a few weeks ago said something extremely similar about, you know, how we, he had gone into the stars to understand the nature of consciousness, you know, into the source of the light. Um, another interesting aspect of this that I, I just sort of hit me today is that this hermetic axiom that everything contains its contradiction, uh, light, um, you know, nuclear fission, uh, what, or what, what, what is happening in the sun is not, it is basically the same process as uh, that which causes a nuke to destroy Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Uh, we uh, kindle the same energy that lights the stars upon our enemies um, from time to time. And um, it's the that same force that is the ultimate, uh, most powerful giver of life uh, is also our most powerfully uh, destructive purveyor of death. Um, you know, that's not necessarily related to light and consciousness, but it is, uh, you know, ballpark um, definitely fits in with our, our general theme here. <laughs> um, remarkable universe. You know, also, I'm, I'm just going to share this. It has nothing to do with our, 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 our uh, main theme. By the way, if you guys want to, you know, uh, uh, ask me any questions or, or chat at all, do feel free to engage in the, in the chat. Nobody has, no, nobody's really said too much. To, I mean, there's comments, and I appreciate that, but um, you guys have been awfully quiet tonight out there. Most... Oh, the poor flat earther. Poor flat earther. Jesus really did melt a lot of brains, man. It's, it's a really sad thing that religion existed. And that's, you know, why I'm doing this. Because I, I think that the truth uh, sort of, you know, to the extent that we can know it, is observable, demonstrable, obvious. Um, and it's, it's, it's something that has been known um, to people that have had to hide in secret societies and people have become awfully suspicious, a lot of people, um, of their motives uh, because they knew that they had to hide, otherwise they would be burned alive um, by good Christians and the like. So, 
Um, it's it's time to to break all those oaths of secrecy, and um, hopefully the great revolution that has been prepared f by the ages uh, with the aim of the amelioration of mankind from uh, superstition and despotism and slavery and 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 religion um, will truly finally begin to march and just in the nick of time if you ask me because man are we flirting with disaster um, right now because our lease is running out uh, Kensho um, and it's not that we're, uh, it's not that we are, um, shutting down permanently. It's just that the, the, we are, we're moving, our lease is running out and, um, the, the problem for, for some of the people, uh, is, is that the next place that we're going, um, it's going to be a lot more expensive. So, uh, the retreats in October, uh, or, you know, the rest of this month, uh, it's only a few days, but the retreats in October will be the last ones that are offered at this price because um, my overhead is about to like like 30x. Like I'm not kidding, it's gonna 30x. Um, and I'm trying to come up with creative ways to uh, mitigate some of that because I would like what I would like to do is is always have you know offer some retreats that anyone can afford and then um, offset that. Uh, maybe breaking even for a couple of months um, by having some high-end retreats and I don't see anything wrong with that because only people that can afford them go to those and this property would allow us to justify that because um, you know without leaving the property there's a crystal clear river with waterfalls and caverns there are parrots around the windows or monkeys all over the property there's all of the plant medicines you can imagine growing everywhere there's mountain high mountain hiking and jungle hiking there's a spring that is sacred to the Quechua uh, that only couples and women are allowed to go to. Um, you know, we have indigenous shaman that are going to be teaching a school on plant medicine on the property. Like all of this stuff is already on the property. There's a boa reserve because they rescued a bunch of boas and let them all go and they bred. Now there's boas just like, you know, super deep. Um, did I mention the monkeys? There's also uh, right next to the ayahuasca uh, uh, ceremonial building. There's this big flat rock with a giant spherical rock on top of it that you can feel vibrating when you drink ayahuasca inexplicably. Uh, according to the Quechua shaman that owns the property, um, it's been there for thousands of years. No one has ever known where it came from. And um, it's sort of like the Stonehenge of, uh, of ayahuasca for the Quechua. Um, there was a flag of Baphomet hanging in the ayahuasca uh, uh, building which blew my mind when I he, he even had his hands in the uh, as above so below just like Baphomet in the Eliphas Levi drawing and um, its name is Supai and it's uh, uh, a Quechua uh, spirit that does exactly the same thing that Baphomet does it, it, it also has breasts it, it was mind-blowing And when I saw that I was like okay we're definitely supposed to be here um, it was just the craziest thing um, yeah, so that's, you know, I, I feel like we have to go to this property, um, but it's going to be way more expensive. At the same time, though, it's way deeper in the jungle, and it's just way better. So, um, but, you know, Miss Wali and the place where we are now is amazing. It's great. You know, everyone's having an amazing life-changing time here, and, um, you know, if you want to still come while we're able to offer it for really affordable prices relative to other retreats, you have to do it by the end of October. Uh, because November 1st, we are out of here. Um, if you want more information about the retreat, Gavino, you should email me. Uh, the email address is the one in the chat up there, uh, Blukers, or you can email the email in the um, description. Okay, so I was just going to offer one other um, bit of insight that occurred to me uh, just the other day. Um, and it's, it regards psychedelic music, which I, I think, you know, obviously the vibration, it's the light and the sound, um, the light and the vibration that they're very much almost the same thing. Um, but you know, light and sound basically vibration and light, um, however you want to talk about it. Uh, I realized 
that because you know if you listen to music that is made by musicians that know this stuff that really understand what consciousness is and they're using music as a tool to sort of connect other units of consciousness to it um which is what the grateful dead and fish and tool and pink floyd and you can hear it in the music that they're connected to this thing but if particularly the grateful dead if you take psychedelics and listen to the music there's something that happens that is not it's just way beyond normal and um it's not your imagination it's not that you're high it, it i used to think that it was because your normal consciousness is not subtle enough to perceive which isn't inaccurate but what is actually happening hit me like a ton of bricks during ayahuasca ceremony the other night so i talk a lot about how um our consciousness is you know this idea that people actually falsely attribute to um terence mckenna that actually uh came from huxley um i think that mckenna probably mentioned it and didn't credit huxley often um, but, uh, this idea that there's a reducing valve in our consciousness because the sensory input from the universe would be totally overwhelming and we would be unable to function if we were receiving all of this. So, and it's not just the, 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 the less than 1% spectrum of light. Um, you know, it also is other people's thoughts and, uh, you know, the full spectrum of consciousness that our brain actually can pick up, um, and would pick up, you know, it'd be absolutely overwhelming. And so, uh, everything is compressed, um, down to a, 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 a more manageable spectrum, including music. And so when you drink two cups of ayahuasca and then you listen to, uh, you know, live grateful dead or tool or, uh, Frank Zappa or anything, you know, pop music that is just kind of canned bullshit doesn't really change that much, <laughs> but anything that really has a connection to spirit or, you know, is really sophisticated consciousness. Um, and actually could, because it has to exceed the threshold of what you normally perceive, right? Otherwise, there, you know, that's why you can listen to Madonna on acid and it still just sounds like Madonna. You know what I mean? It might sound a little better, but it's not like or cardi b or whatever you know um it's but it is how the music actually sounds because what we perceive in our normal state of consciousness is a compressed file basically and so you know any guitar player can tell you and i'm sure this is applicable to um to uh, other other types of music too too much compression makes things soulless and lifeless and it just will strangle the tone out of a guitar right too much compression uh so you know it just hit me that that's what it is it's, it's just that the reducing valve has compressed the sound of it and so when you take psychedelics and you listen to music and it's suddenly this like immersive like liquid fire like you know just almost liquid crystalline just this other thing you know um that's what it is you're you're Reducing valves are turned down, and so you can actually perceive music as it really is, and not the compressed version of it that our normal consciousness is capable of processing. So, uh, and actually, Kinsho, what we were um, what we were listening to uh, is a version of of "Ship Arriving Too Late to Save a Drowning Witch" by Frank Zappa. Um, that even though he had the best bands in the world that could play impossible music, he still had to splice together 18 performances um, because every single time they played it, the band would train wreck apart. So he had to splice together 18 different versions to get one complete one. And, you know, you might think like, well, man, I don't know about ayahuasca and just overly technical, crazy prog rock. But the reality is that your brain is uh, more neuroplastic and um, my suspicion was that it could actually make you more intelligent to expose yourself to music with that kind of statistical density uh, in an altered state. And actually a client, several of them that I have done this to now at this point, but one of them and exactly like, I put it on thinking, okay, not that he wasn't already intelligent, he's extremely intelligent, but I thought, you know, this is going to boost intelligence to expose people to music this sophisticated in this state. And um, today he mentioned to me, uh, I'm sure that music made me more intelligent. I didn't ask, right? 
And um, by the way, uh, in case you're wondering about um, if you've heard that ayahuasca, the, the alkaloids used to be called telepamine, um, there's good reason for that. Uh, it's an absolute certainty. Um, you know, I'm not going to go into a whole bunch of details because I've already made tons of videos relaying my experiences and even research that was done in the late 60s that proved this. Um, but uh, there was a bunch of things in the last ceremony that I was like directing at people and, and thinking like consciously, like I think they're, they're hearing me telepathically right now. And today, one of those people told me, you know, that we were telepathically linked. So, you know, I was, his English isn't great. So I was trying to um, really sing like over the recording, like loudly uh, and clearly so he could understand the lyrics. And, and he was like, man, when I couldn't understand the lyrics, you know, I was, I was trying to like telepathically tell you to sing louder. And I was literally like at certain points pushing my voice and like covering my hands around because I was thinking that, you know, I exactly that we're telepathically linked right now so we could probably hear the lyrics in my thoughts but i'm gonna like sing really really loudly and make sure he understands because the lyrics were so relevant to what was happening with him at the moment so um yeah the next day you know all of this stuff that i was thinking we're telepathically linked right now you know uh this song's making more intelligent this one is you know i need to scream the lyrics almost to make sure he hears it uh clearly um literally just told me that you know those moments where i was i was feeling that telepathic link that it was so you know what i mean and you know you guys that's not like this is something unusual this is like standard protocol this is a normal day at the office um honestly you know uh a, a lot of people um have experiences of telepathy and talking to animals and all that sort of thing when they take psychedelics and they think that it's um, just the drugs later, you know, but I think what's actually happening is that uh, biophotons uh, in our DNA are responsible for the exchange of information. It's not woo and you're not just high. Uh, in fact, um, when indigenous shamans uh were asked how they discovered ayahuasca they would say like don't you talk to the jungle white man basically and in our language what that actually means is that they had retained the ability to uh listen to the information that is being collected by the bow by their dna uh via biophotons that are exchanged between all living tissue that contains DNA and there's been research done on this it's absolutely a real thing um, no doubt about it no bout it out it um, so uh, that's that's what that's about um, you know and I think that we have just lost our ability to uh, do it consciously because of lack of necessity and that's how evolution works if you don't um, need a, a, an attribute it's subject to de-emphasis and de-evolution um, and so that that's what that is and it doesn't mean that every person that eats mushrooms is not imagining that they're talking to a bird telepathically but I think that it is um, you know when you have those filters down uh, I I have observed over you know a decade now so many times um, that level of communication uh, between myself and shaman um, so specific so there's no there's just no chance that it's just you know uh, like the first time I could see through my pineal gland, which has rods and cones, and it's connected to the um, the visual neocortex, uh, so it totally can work. Um, and the next morning, the first thing the shaman says to me when he sees me is, "Sometimes you can see through your forehead when you drink the medicine." Like, what are the chances of that? Why would he say that? You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, long story short, I don't think there's any doubt that these compounds can. Uh, allow us to experience um, telepathy so light you guys that's it our entire experience um, everything that we think is really just light talking to itself uh, this revelation or however you want to call it ooh, here's a weird stinging caterpillar let's see if I can pick him up without hurting myself I'll show you guys um, one of these he's got these really cool little antennas I see that I have a lag so it takes me a second to pick things up on the camera 
let him relax for a second and I'll put him on. Um, man, the antennas on this guy are just hilarious. But yeah, he'll sting the shit out of you. In fact, the most painful encounter that I've had with um, insects here, I've been bitten by a bullet ant, uh, but the worst was a caterpillar that I grabbed. There's actually a caterpillar here that, well, it's not really in focus, is it? Let me see if I can get the camera to focus on it. It's still focusing on my face, like, by default it, um, anyways, if you guys could see the caterpillar, it's super cool, uh, but I gotta go, because, um, I'm getting tired, and this is devolving, so, thank you guys so much for spending this time with me, I hope that it was enlightening, and, uh, helpful in some way, please hit the like button, share, subscribe, support us, um, right on, Philip, uh, support us, um, via PayPal, Zelle, become a patron, join our secret streams, um, and we'll see you again very soon.